Monday, which means it's time for the troubleshooters. So let's dive into some announcements and some recap, and then we'll get into the game itself. This is uh, out saving lives or being the first one to the spot to save lives. So we'll be back with us uh, maybe a little bit later. It really depends on how it goes. Uh, first of all, hi, Decca. We've missed you. Thanks for the hype. And make sure you spread the love out on all of the Twitterverse and everything else like that. I just finished D&D &D Weekend and uh, Virtual D&D &D Weekend being hosted by Baldman Games, which is something that they do on a monthly basis. We just wrapped up the last one. However, in February, we're not only doing the Virtual D&D &D Weekend, which you can sign up for on Yawning Portal when it's released, which is the official like ticketing booth for um, Watsy, uh, but we're also doing Winter Fantasy. Uh, Winter Fantasy is a huge convention that we went to last year uh q and i got to meet for the first time q found out i'm a really good hugger uh <laughs> and um we had a great time unfortunately with everything being in the condition and shape that it is we were not able to go this year they're not doing a physical one they are only doing one in the virtual realm however it is still going to be five let's see wednesday thursday friday saturday and sunday so five days of D, D of gaming uh so it's going to be great along with that they're still doing the virtual D, D weekend for february being the glutton that i am i'm going to sign up for both although i'm only going to run a few games at each one so as not to burn myself out because we're coming up to something that i feel like it's important to bring us up now and that is we're coming up to the end of the first season of the troubleshooters. Don't worry, have no fear. There will be a season two. But this is season this is episode eight of season one, and there are twelve episodes. So you've got eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. And then we're gonna be done for about a month or so. And in that month's time, we're gonna look at production. We're gonna meet on the regular still, not every Monday, but we're gonna re meet on the regular still talk about development and story arcs and things like that so that I can write the story for season two and make sure that it wraps up neatly in 12 episodes. And then we're going to continue to do the same thing over and over again. And we hope that you guys will stay with us during that time. So in the meantime, what are we going to do? Well, Mondays are going to sit absent. No, we're going to show the show again. Will we get through all 12 episodes before we start the new season? Of course not, but we're going to hit some highlights some things that we really want to show off and uh, changes and things like that. So keep an eye out for that and always stay tuned. You might see my face pop on. I also might take Mondays to run uh, stream me playing Baldur's Gate 3 or Horizon Zero Dawn or any other game that I'm currently involved in. Uh, I think that would be a kind of a neat use for Monday night and meet with some friends and things like that. So we have virtual D&D &D weekend coming up in February. We have the uh, Winter Fantasy, which you can sign up for tickets when that goes on. Uh, and then in April here in Huntsville, the Pop Culture and Comic Expo is coming to us live. They did a great job of social distancing and being one of the only conventions that I actually got to go to physically all of last year, other than Winter Fantasy, really. Um, and then, the, but they are doing it again, and I loved how they treated it last year. I trust in them that they're going to do a great job this year. I will be running the new, uh, the new convention season campaign for Dire Bear Adventuring Company, and I would like to announce that coming soon to a DM's guild near you. I'm not sure if I want to do that yet because I'm trying to see if I can get something else in the work. Because once I put it up on DM's guild, I can't sell it anywhere else. But coming soon to you all will be the convention adventures from Dire Bear Adventuring Company that we've had in the previous two. So that means the ruination of Waltus Rake, which was the first one that kind of went out, uh, as well as the puzzle one that we had last year. So we should see all of those coming up pretty soon. And that is exciting news because you can purchase those and run them. Uh, the ruination of Waltus Rake was a huge hit with everyone. They loved it. Uh, it was a really great investigation and then puzzle game and so i look forward to seeing that one translated onto paper so that people could play it because i know i had a lot of people asking for it um another big announcement that we've got and i promise you i'm not stalling uh <laughs> another big announcement we've got is that we have stepped up our social media presence um so keep an eye on us for places because we'll start to see 
Q as I went and poked him yesterday and said, hey, I need more from this. Uh, <laughs> but you should start seeing polls, uh, questions uh, that we're going to be answering or asking, links to cool things that are happening in the world around us uh, with regards to D&D and other role-playing games because we're not just a D&D house. We have Scion, which uh, is the new game on Tuesdays. And then we also have uh, the Monster of the Week still going on on Wednesdays. So we uh, we have a lot of things going on. And if you want to be a part of it or just meet with us, you can always join our Discord. Uh, support us if you can. And uh, let's see. Let's recap. Bit of a kerfuffle with some lycanthropes in the woods. Uh, they thought they were being tailed. They kind of were. Uh, as they were going to investigate this manner that had fallen uh, that may have l had clues to uh, Adrian's creation and when we last left off they approached the fallen the uh, the fallen house the burned rubble and ruins of this estate that is no longer standing without further ado let's begin the troubleshooters Welcome back, everyone. All right. It feels like it's been a while, hasn't it? We took like two weeks, and then we had one session, and then we had a week off. Thanks, everybody. So real quick, because I didn't do this in the announcements, this was the preamp that I was using for a very long time, and it's a wonderful device. I would highly recommend it. It's actually a portable microphone uh, that you can turn into a preamp uh, as you need to. Uh, and I loved it. It was great. Did a great job. It's got the XLR plugs. It died on me. When I hold the power button, it just does this, and it never loads. And if I let off of it, it just powers off again. So she's a she's a goner. So today, actually on Saturday, I got a brand new toy. Ooh, fancy. Look at this thing. Isn't that cool? This was not very expensive for a preamp, but Word to the wise, if you pick up one of these, don't forget to push the 48 volt button so that way you can provide power down the XLR cable to the microphone. Otherwise, they won't hear you. And you'll look like an idiot when you push the button and go, <laughs> it wasn't working. Uh, so there we go. That was my, my troubleshooting today was fixing this, which was why we were a little bit behind uh, the gun today. Uh, so the car pulls up with calm you all look around at the fallen ruins of this location. And it is. It is um, rubble, rock, and ruin. Ash that has been gathered and clumped into a mass of, of just detritus everywhere. There are standing chimneys that are blackened with ash and soot as though they were burned. Everything is a mess, and this is not a new mess. This is an old fire. Um, did the Duke tell us about how long ago this happened? He did not. Okay. The Duke would give you information? I mean... <laughs> he told us it existed. That's fair. He did tell you it existed. Man. Yeah. To his, to his credit, that was about it. To his credit, he did something. Yeah, so it, it was a couple you. weeks. I was a little fuzzy, so I figured I'd double check. Is there anything out of place other than ruin and rubble? Does anything look like something's wrong with the with the scene? 
I mean, it just looks like a fire from where you're at right now, which you're standing on this gravel drive. Like this huge gravel drive. It has a fountain out in front of it. Um, of course, it's not burbling with water or anything. It actually has a small amount of stagnant water sitting in the basin. This was a large house? Small house, medium? It was a, it was a, an estate, so it was a large oh. manor. Jeez, okay. Uh, is anything left standing? Or no, the, the whole thing's completely burned to the ground. Some, some timbers here and there. Okay. Uh, a few stout chimneys made of older brick. Some All right. Things like that. But yeah, nothing else is really standing here. All right. Uh, All right. Well, sure. well, well, once more. Did you say basement? basement? Look for a basement? Uh, okay, uh, give me an investigation check. Can I help out with that? Actually, I was I was gonna actually start uh, looking through. Are you skilled in that? Insight. I. I am. Wait, investigation. I'm not. No, I I wanted to I I wanted to go walk through it just to look around and see if anything was left standing. Investigation. Basically. I am not. Okay. I mean, you can absolutely just like mosey around. It would just be separate investigation checks. Okay. That, yeah, that's, okay. that's what I'm I know absolutely nothing. In fact, I'm pretty sure there's still a roof on this building. I wrote like, one. You're like you're looking at it, going. I, I think we can. I think we can find it and and, and rebuild it. <laughs> I don't know if we're at the right house, guys. <laughs> there's not a house here. I think we're my passive perception is eighteen. Passive perception is an eighteen. Okay. Um, standing and looking around, you don't really notice anything about the house. The, there's something though, the pattern of the, where the fountain sits, it is the fountain has this large base and it's probably close to 10 feet across. There is then concentric circles getting larger outside of that. So creating these three uh, three separate circles separated by like a row of weeds. At one time, it was probably well manicured. So you would have this uh, like almost white stone from the basin and then you would have green grass banded around it. And then you would have more white stone and then green grass and then more white stone. It probably looked beautiful whenever the water was flowing and it was all well maintained. My investigation like was, was a good for a mark on my investigation. Lynn? Uh, Q, what was that about? Emma? Sorry, my investigation was a 15 as I was going through. That was what I rolled. All right. So, list the thing that no you notice is that uh, when you have cobblestone or stone or anything else like that, your expectation is that roots and grasses grow up over time, right? Those concentric circles, while they're weeds and they're overgrown on either side where the bands are, there are no weeds growing in the circles itself, like where the stone circles are. She just like sort of sit there You cut out mid combo. Look puzzled. She knows that there's something, but I don't know what to put my We're getting like, like three or four words every paragraph. We we missed a whole lot of that. Nothing. Yeah, I missed almost all of. Um, hold on a second. Let's see. What did I?
Okay. So she pipes up and mentions the stone to both Emrys, uh, or to Emrys Gej and to Munin, pointing out that there's no weeds growing in the stone itself. I can take a look. You can also take a look, if anything. All right. Um... <clears throat> So it's just stones in a circle. So what you've got is you've got, so looking at it from the eagle eye, right from the top down, you have the fountain in the center, which is 10 feet across. You have a band of weeds or grass. Then you have a stone circle, more weeds and grass, a stone circle, more weeds and grass and the stone circle. So you have three circles of stone getting bigger as they go out and separated in between them are bands of grass and weeds. Does that make sense? It looks like a bullseye. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. like, a yeah, bull yeah. like a target with you know grass and thank stone. you. Sorry. All Hello? right. Can you hear me now? Yes. So all that being said, I have about the same eyes as Liz. That was a two. You're doing great. What's your passive perception for Moonin? Sixteen. All right. And passive perception for uh Emrys? Sorry, were we making a check for that? No, no, I was just looking okay. to see what my passive was. perception is a 13. Okay. Um, looking at the stones again, like I said, it's just odd that there's no grass or anything growing on the stones. Like you would have expected to see, you know, weeds shooting up through them. Uh Gesh is the one that has the eyes. Gesh is off uh, looking at everything else right now. That's what it is. Yeah, um, Gesh is off looking with his flamethrower. Um, isn't it weird that it's like weeds everywhere else but these stones? Like even the gravel driveway has like roots and things coming up in it. Um, can I lift one of the rocks? Just lift it. Um, give me an athletics check. I was about to say, do not tell me strength. strength you want to lift strength. something. How are you going to acrobatic no, a rock up? <laughs> I don't know. Kick it? Um... Yeah. All right, Pele, let's see you do an overhead and like pinwheel kick. Just... <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, like, I, I meant like just a flat strength check. I was like, please. Oh, no, I have, no. I have athletics. I'll do athletics. Oh, okay. <laughs> 21. <laughs> you go to lift it and you realize that it doesn't move really like the stone that you go to pick up doesn't move. And you realize though that the stone band that you grab a hold of. Yeah, it's all attached. Although, yeah, it's all attached, but it shifts a little bit. Like it actually moves. Like rotates? Mm -hmm. I was about to say my, my goblin brain's like, I can I like push it to the left or push it to the right? Like more? Yeah, it turns to the left and right. Are there any markings on the rings? Give me an investigation check again, please. Oh boy, we're not going to use that die again. <laughs> You're in jail for the evening. Yeah, you get the hell out of here, sir. <laughs> That's a 17. There are markings on there. Um, the first ring is a line down and a single bar off of it. It looks almost like a rune, but it's not. Not any rune that you would know, but it's a line down and then an angled line into it. Like a short stick lined into it. So, kind of like that? Exactly like that. Okay. Does the fountain look like a sundial at all? Like, is that is there like a, a spire? There is a larger, like, not quite an obelisk. It has more, you know, shapes to it. But it, yeah, the center of it, where the water would spout out, is a long stem with a flat uh, stone disc on top of it. So you get the idea that the water would pump up through the center and then flower out from the top. 
but yeah, you can look up there. Uh, give me, um, actually give me a perception check again, um, or investigation. I'll let you choose. Which ring had the, ring had, oops, sorry, which ring had that first symbol? Was it the outermost ring or the innermost ring? Uh, the the innermost ring. Okay. And Liz, what did you roll? 27 for per okay. perception. Uh, Liz, you can see that here and there along the, um, the stem are, it looks like scratches. Like anybody walking by and like just, looking at it would never have noticed it but you did you see on intervals facing different sides north south north south east and west you see markings the first one that you see is at the base of the stem and it is a single stick with a with another branch off of it much like the symbol that they pointed out on the ring She would um, remark on the fact that her, her elf eyes saw saw the saw the markings on the thing. Her elf eyes. Oh. Liz, what do your elf eyes see? I'm a descendant of Legolas. <laughs> I love it here. I'm gonna um, leave. I'll say it's fine. <laughs> I accept it. I All right. It's just, he's just angry because he's a, he's more of a sprinter. He's wasted over long distances. <laughs> oh, I love you guys. <laughs> and we love you too. It'd be my luck. I'm the one that kicks the helmet and breaks my toe. <laughs> yeah, but it was great method acting. He was really in the moment. Oh, that's why. <laughs> it was in the moment because it was a moment. Okay. Um, so uh, are we playing match the symbols? Sure. All right. Um, really quick before we start, the like, DM. I'm, I'm like, I heard a voice and I didn't realize it was something. Um, I'm getting like a delay from when Liz Vixen talks. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I was like, I, I see Liz talk, and then like five or six seconds later, I hear Liz talk. Oh. It's because she's all the way in Florida. And you're all the way in New York. It's the there's time a delay. It's like yeah. not, it's, there's not a time. To, this the distance. <laughs> it's both Eastern. Do you need a moment? Are you okay? <laughs> We're fine. We're fine. So okay. So okay. before before we start playing matching, do any of the other rings move? Like, I'll go and touch them and try sliding first, them back and forth. To... So there are three rings, first, okay. second, third. Mm -hmm. The uh, the first one, which you've okay. already moved. Yep. Obviously. Yep. The second one does, but it only seems to go in one direction. Like, you rotate it, and then you go to move it back, and it locks into place. So it looks like it only goes in one direction. Okay. And then... the last one doesn't turn at all. And I don't mean turn as in like it gives a little bit, but like something's blocking it. It no, does. I go to like move it, and it's just and it's just there. solid. Okay, so no movement, one movement directionally it cannot go back. So we would have to keep rotating it, which is fine. And the other one moves back. So that's that's from like inner to outer, right? Correct. Or was that inner to so outer? So like this. So uh, the smallest inner ring doesn't move. No, the innermost ring, the smallest ring, the innermost ring, is the first one you tried, and it moves fully. Okay, broken. sorry. 
my brain was like, okay, start from the out, move my way yeah, in. But move, yeah. Start from the inside, move your way out. So the innermost okay. ring is the one that moves, moves freely in both directions. The second one moves only in one direction, and that's to the left. It goes counterclockwise. To the left. Okay, perfect. And then, and then the, the last, last one doesn't. is a solid, like, locked into place. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, I guess from here we're matching stuff. It's the match game. <laughs> How many combinations can there be? It's Beast the match Man. game with Chuck Woolery. Oh, wait, that was the dating game. No, that wasn't. What was that? Love Connection? I don't remember. We're back in two and two. Those were a lot of words that I'm not sure what they meant. You got to remember, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, did you find anything on the fountain there, Liz? I looked, I looked around the fountain to see what I saw, and then I relay that information. So you do see, um, on the eastern side, you see the, no, I'm sorry, on the western side, you see the one branch with the notch on it. On the northern side, up from that one, you see a single line, and it's got two branches on either side. Okay. So, like a... Yay! Uh, you see on the... That was... Southern side? On the northern side... Uh, again, up a notch from where the last one was. So it looks like they're climbing up. You mm -hmm. see uh, the single stick in the middle. You see line in, line in, and then you see another branch on the other side. So it looks like the that Y shape with another branch underneath it. Are you sure we're not messing with runes? These look a whole lot like Norse runes. <laughs> they do look like a lot like Norse runes. Yes. Uh, there is one more symbol on there. Um, it looks like a scratch at first, but you realize it was made with the same tool. It is a single line. I want to see your drawings now. <laughs> what? I said, I want to see your drawing. I want to see what you were drawing. Me? Are you drawing? Yeah, were you drawing it? I was just writing the symbols with the different directionals. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's it's on the tiniest piece of paper. Oh, look how small. <laughs> yes, it does resemble Norse runes very much. However, mm. it's not what they are. Okay. Just me, the player's brain, going, these are Norse runes. These are complex Norse runes, but they're Norse runes. Um, yes. It looks like the symbols, starting from the outermost one, almost add up to create the one on yeah it looks it looks like these runes almost fit together to create the complex one here I'm relaying this to the party well do we match everything up then or, I mean, we might as well. And we find the symbols on the rings, I suppose. You do find the symbols on the rings. However, the outermost ring, the one that doesn't move, mm -hmm. and the symbol are opposite of one another so we have to get all four in a line that would be my guess seeing as they look like they combine can we move can we... the center fountain wherever the symbol is i mean like not the full fountain you, like I don't... you can try i will okay. assist all right i would like for you to give me a strength athletics check please Rune Force. <laughs> <sighs>
That sounds like JT's like alter ego. It's just him and his Nordic gear, just his Norse gear. Just he is Rune Force. Hair flying behind him. Rings. <laughs> That's a big band from back when Moon and his were fun. <laughs> All right. Uh, what, would you, what did you roll in your athletics check? 19. It does move. It moves rather easily. As you move it, you watch the outer, or not the outer ring, but the uh, second one, the middle one that only turns counterclockwise, turns the opposite direction. As you turn it. You turn this one and that one starts to move. So to have that one line up, we need to have that one turn until the symbol is on the opposite side of where this symbol is. So that way when we turn it back, it turns back into the correct position. The question there is, does it turn at the same rate as the outer ring because of size difference? We would have to troubleshoot it. Well, I'm going to... He said the name! He said the name! (laughs) He did the thing! He said the name! (laughs) Uh, You note that for every turn you make, it turns an equidistance. Okay. So so not the outer ring, but the second one, the middle ring, is the one that was only turning counterclockwise. When you turn it, it turns an equidistance, but clockwise. Hi, Dre. Hi, Drake. I thought you said hi, Drake. I thought you were saying hi to my kid. I was like, what? No. Yeah, he's just behind you all of a sudden. (laughs) Hey, we share a birthday. It's allowed. Stop. Stop. That would freak me the fuck out. (laughs) Because there's only one way in this room. Like, I saw the door. You you see eyes on the bookcase. I just see my kid. I'm like, uh, I got to (laughs) go. I'm not. This isn't cool. Uh, I have been given it. luck for making a pun. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Just Enough Wrong. I appreciate the um, luck. Okay. Uh, noticing that, noticing that it moves um, in that way, uh, I'd like to... So... I am going to stop turning the fountain part I will go to the middle ring. I will turn it so that the symbol is opposite of the symbol on the fountain. And then uh, when time comes to move it back, I will turn that middle symbol so that hopefully they line up at least in three. Okay. Give me just a straight... Go ahead. What were you saying? Nope. Go ahead. Do your thing. Give me a straight intelligence roll. (laughs) I have something there. That's fine. Oh, What's that I, noise? I have an idea, but I want to see how this goes. That's a nat 20. <laughs> 21! <Well>, you <laughs> would already started turning it. Yeah. And so it's already out of alignment. So what you do is you calculate how much you have left to line up the symbol on the fountain with the <laughs> ring that doesn't move, the outermost ring. Mm-hmm. And then you move it cl- uh, counterclockwise enough to where it will turn it just to line up with those two. Well done. You do so, and then you turn the fountain, and it lines up. You have two of them that are lined up with the symbols. Yeah, that's there. the smartest thing y'all are going to get out of me tonight. Sorry. <laughs> this is it. I've peaked. I've done. i got to go. <laughs> I've peaked. It's only downward spiral from here. <laughs> well, move the last ring into place. All right. Moving the last ring into place to where it lines up with the symbol on the fountain. You hear the sound of a like a soft click, and then you hear the sound of water draining out of something. As you watch the center of the fountain, the basin that had collected this stagnant water starts to drain out. There are you know, frogs that are still like bouncing out of there now because you've disturbed their home. Um, algae and other growths on the f- on the fountain are like sinking to the bottom. But what you notice are 
a set of stairs that spiral down into somewhere. Into the darkness. The darkness. Mind your steps so you don't slip on the algae, but... Because it is wet and slipperies. We do have a flamethrower. Quick dry. It's gonna smell so bad. Um, <laughs> Make sure the frogs are out of there first. Yeah, please. Really quickly. Roast, roasted <laughs> frog. Quickly, you're walking over with like four of them. Yeah. <laughs> They're just ribbiting and squirming. <laughs> my whole sweater is just covered. I'm like, I don't know. It's fine. I'll watch later. Um, are the frogs safe? Yes. Good. Okay. Then throw her away. Um, <clears throat> I don't mind going first. I'll find a light and. I mean, you got it. You got it. You know, an electric torch. You've got a flashlight. Yep. Uh, kicking it on and heading down into the staircase. Mm -hmm. Do Do we want to keep our sweet cinnamon bun up top? With the car, or are we... I mean, he was having a good talk with Gej. Yeah, Gej just waves you all and says, "Call me if there's any trouble." And uh, Calm, Calm's like uh, looking through his his uh, accordion case of holding. Uh, he's like, "You take notes. If there's anything that you find of interest, make sure that you take notes." All right. Gez, if you hear gunshots, it's time to come help. Or if we come running out and we say, burn it! Just yeah. light it up. <laughs> uh, Alright, down I go. Alright. The stairs spiral down for about ten feet before leveling off to a flat surface. They then just descend straight down into... Uh, for another 20 feet down below. You already feel the loamy smell of earth around you. This, You know that you're descending deep into this, like an undercroft almost. Um, pretty soon the, the uh, shorn up earthen walls are replaced by cobblestone walls. Large stones that equip it. And it's no longer like slightly damp in here, it becomes a dry surface as you exit into a rather sizable room. Uh, give me just a moment here. The room itself, you know, the room where it happened, is about 15 feet by 15 feet unadorned there is nothing around you uh, other than the staircase leading up there is an exit to the east that is not barred or has a door or anything there's an exit to the south that is a closed door yes i'm glad to see that you're all coming into there for me i need to make sure you know i did not see if i had your updated tokens in there Do you need me to batch drop you the images real quick? Uh, if you could, the tokens would be great, and then I'll get them added in. Yeah. I would say I've had this done ahead of time, but I, it's been a hell of a couple of weeks. <laughs> uh, one, two, three... Marlena. And last but not least. Oh. I 
acá, acá. Para acá, para acá. Man, this artwork is amazing. Sorry. Sorry, no, sorry. Oh, what's this? It's it's strange. This is magic everywhere. <laughs> well, while this is going on, how's everybody in chat doing today? Yep, sorry guys. Give me just one second. Cute. I like heard conversation start and then nothing, so and then I cut out, yeah. Yeah. It was uh. cold. Q, did you have a holiday today? That's a good question. Today is something. I remember it's seeing Monday. it on the camera. I know that. <laughs> I don't. You're still cutting out just They're a little Canadians. bit. Canadians. Yeah. I know it was, it was written on the calendar, but I think it was just written on the calendar. But. Uh, no, I don't believe. I don't believe I did. I mean, every day's a holiday when you're currently kind of out of a job. Or at least a paying one, I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, if you'll go to your journals, you should have your character sheets with your character tokens on there, which is awesome. I just, I want to see something. Oh, fill that. Okay. All right. I said reveal areas, not hide areas. Thank you, you useless reptile. <laughs> you useless reptile? <laughs> You've never seen How to Train Your Dragon? Right. It's been a, it has been a while, though. Thank you, you useless reptile. All right. Uh, please load your tokens onto the uppermost corner on the left-hand side there. You should see the staircase. And yeah, there you go. Give me one moment and I will get us switched up over in here. You're fantastic. Don't ever change. And... There we go. I'm just fixing something because otherwise I'm just... It's, it's a little squished and...
Hey, hey look at that. We moved. <laughs> we... <laughs> That was bizarre. We're professionals. We know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Those layers are locked. I don't know why they moved. Welcome, Tiger Ban. It is MLK Day in America. Ooh, lamb shanks. That sounds delicious. I know, right? I uh, I had chicken mm. for the kids. I had chicken for the kids earlier. Perfectly done, so it was nice and juicy. But oh. all the way through, use this uh, Russian spice called Sardust. T S A R Sardust. Uh, it was this wonderful. God, I can't even tell. I don't have to, I'll look it up for you later, though, and tell you what all's in it. Uh, that with just a little bit of salt on it, though, they ate it. And believe it or not, they asked for cauliflower, and they ate the cauliflower. And oh. green beans. It was a super healthy dinner for them. I feel accomplished. Go, go, super dad. Oh, also, a win. Uh, my shirt, for those of you who, who don't know, says, uh, gonna hit them in the figata faccia. So I play on Sundays with some friends of mine, and this is your faccia. So when I hit them in the figata faccia, uh, it was just a saying that we have going on. And for Christmas, my friends got me this shirt and I've got a cup that says the same thing on it. So hit him in the figure to fight you. All right. Everything good? We we lined up? Yep, we're uh we're here just waiting on okay. list to pop on the map here with us. Oh, she has drugged herself off into the wild beyond her. There you go. There we are. <laughs> All right. You see a door to yourself. The hallway extends out and ends in a door to the east. The stone here is not super covered in dust. There is a thin layer of dust on it. Um, but it doesn't seem to seem to have had any activity in it recently is there anything that lists can cut out completely right there see on the walls like near the doorway uh, on the walls, give me, let's see, your passive perception is 18. Um, nothing that stands out. It seems to be just like this was formed and then these stones were kind of pressed in to shore up the walls and give it a more of a, you know, kind of a lived in look. Hmm. You said, are either of these doors locked? Uh, the one to the south is, you would have to proceed down the hallway to the other one. Just, 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 just because, um, I tend to think about these things sometimes. Walking, uh, towards that, uh, long hallway, um, from what I can tell, does it look like there are it looks like there's been nobody down here for a long time, right? Is there, like, dust or anything like that on the ground or dirt? Uh, there is, like, dust on the ground, yeah. Um, does it look like in certain places there is more dust or... Give me a perception check. I'm gonna fail this. Perception. Sorry, apologies. Uh, ten. Uh, doesn't seem to be like more dust in one location that you can see. It seems to be an even spread of dust. Okay. Um, then I guess next step is just uh, kind of taking some steps out and seeing if there are any stones that 
feel loose under my uh, foot or not. Investigation check. I thought we were going to get a jazz hand check for a second there. <laughs> Those are spear fingers. Jazz hands. <laughs> uh, 15. Story. 15. Nope, no traps in this in the hallway that you can see so far. All right. Then uh, just cautiously moving down the hallway. Okay. Uh, all right. Moving down the hall, and you said your passive is a 13, is that correct? Yes. Okay. I'm going to cover Emrys. I'm mm -hmm. just going to kind of tuck in here and draw my pistol with my torch in the other hand. Just well, in spike, case. If a spike comes from my head, I at least know he'll hit it with a, with a shot. I'll dent it before and... it hits you. <laughs> Soften the blow. <laughs> Soften the blow by like making it slide right off so it's a grazing shot instead of a full-on spike in the forehead. Uh, all right, go ahead and start proceeding down the hallway if you would, please. Uh, and right there. Yep. Give me a dexterity saving throw. Those I sh should be good at. Um, it's a measure of your dice at this point in time. <laughs> 23. For your birthday, I'm buying you an abacus or a slide, a slide so you can... <laughs> just quick. It's because it was a 17 on the die and I got a plus 6. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to give you shit, though. Uh, 23. Yeah. You hear the click under your foot and you handspring back out of the way as the walls slam shut and then open back up with like rapidity just boom and then you hear it and reset into place oh huh. uh okay so i would have moved back <laughs> move back one square it's like a game of sorry should have <laughs> worn your brown pants today the rest was what i'm wearing right now he'd be in shorts so Shorts. Um, <laughs> Shorts. Yeah, at least to the knees. Um, <laughs> and Crocs. Uh, no. I'm I know where your I know where your Croc influence came from. Actually, I wore Crocs before I started dating Molly. These ones are just fun, though. They're bright orange and they have bananas on them. Um, you don't use you don't use them in the same sense that Deadpool uses them. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. I have Mickey Mouse ears. And she ears cuts out. She's like, can you I hear don't... me? We're like, yeah. And then she cuts out. <laughs> These ones are Molly influence because I got them for my birthday. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> the weirdest fucking pair of shoes I own. I say that and then I have four inch platforms. <clears throat> um, a, a modest short, if you will. A modest oh, yeah, no, Mickey Mouse ears. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. with that, well, one... there's a trap there, <laughs> guys. Just <laughs> you know, um, can you see what's triggering it? Probably a step <laughs> stepping on the plate. I mean, there <laughs> might be a sensor. Hey, you walked Ooh. right into it. I wasn't sure. <laughs> But the click is telling me, perhaps. It's a laser beam. <laughs> you just can't see it. Just can't see it. Infrared. It's, like it's, 19, it's only 1919. I'm sure lasers are a thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well. I have missed you guys so much. <laughs> um, It's a pressure plate. <laughs> Um, Are okay. you okay? <laughs> it's a pressure plate. I mean, I'm not a pancake, so I'm going to say yes. For now. Uh, I would like to uh, take one of my uh, daggers mm -hmm. and uh, 
I want to see about uh, wedging it underneath the pressure plate. So if it's accidentally stepped on, it will not go down. So you're trying to disarm? Either disarm or at least uh, stop it from kind of like being stepped on again. All right. Go ahead and give me your thieves tool check, please. It would be your dexterity plus proficiency. Um, Dex plus proficiency. Plus your d20. And if you have expertise in it, I don't know. I do have expertise in it. So that's double so proficiency, correct? Double your proficiency, correct. Okay. Should be a pretty so high number for you. Plus nine. That's a pretty good number. <clears throat> 23. Abacus noises, go. 23. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Does anybody ever watch Stephen Colbert like when he breaks out the calculator and he <laughs> That's what he does on the calculator. He goes mm, carry the 17. <laughs> Anyways, um I, I completely okay. missed what number you said. 23. 23. Okay. Uh, yes, you are able to find the trigger plate and disarm that. I've successfully oh, disarmed the trap. Yes, you are able to secure the plate so that it does not. Okay. Uh, uh, is my dagger across. stuck there now, or have I done it in a way that no, I no, can no. actually take my dagger back? Yeah, no, you found the plate and you disarmed the triggering mechanism, and then that renders basically renders the plate useless. Okay. So it's it's safe to step on, but you don't lose your your weapon or anything. Perfect. Because I, I was willing I would to ever have you you lose your thieves' tools is if they like failure on trying to open something where it snaps in place or something like that. But okay. Uh, yeah. Then I will. Uh, okay. Well, now that that's fixed. Q is amazing. Ah. Uh, <laughs> listen. That's going to go straight to my head. Don't do it. Um, all right. Hey, that's fixed. Okay, I fixed it. No trap. Sorry. My whole <laughs> brain just lost track. Um, <laughs> we gave you a compliment and it shut you down for a second. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I had to reboot. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Q.exe has stopped working. Every time. Please restart Q. <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. <clears throat> so uh okay uh i will continue uh forward then a little bit after doing that and i will check for any other traps on these floors and uh go ahead and give me another perception check okay i know my perception's a plus three so that's okay can i help <laughs> yeah <laughs> you give advantage i'd like that thank you you're skilled in you're skilled in it in uh, perception, aren't you? I do. So I have yeah. a plus six. Yeah. Delicious, because this is so much better. Uh, twenty, dirty twenty. Uh, the rest of the hallway up to the door is not trapped. Perfect. Now it's okay. checking the door if it's trapped because uh, this place is already giving me trust issues. Okay, go ahead and try can you it. Can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. There we go. Switch to your phone. You are a little yeah. quiet, so I'm just going to bump you up. Say something real quick. One, two. Hey. Sounds good. Sounds good there to me. Awesome. Um, sorry, another perception check, investigation check? Uh, I'll let you choose. I'll go with a perception check because it's better. Sounds good. I will give advantage with that, or I will assist with that. All right. Teen. So I heard the teen part. Fifteen. One five. Uh, no traps. Delicious. Do I just push open the door or is it locked? It is not locked. Okay, just opening the door then. All right. The door wasn't trapped, <clears throat> but behind the door there is a trap. No, just get shot the door wasn't sleep. trapped, but as you open the door, the room fills with gas. And I die. Goodbye. You... Um, the door is just a mimic. <laughs> it's not trapped, but when you touch it, it eats you.
This simple room appears to be a former small kitchenette. You can see uh, several wardrobes or several cabinets being used as a, once as a larder. Uh, there is a table, a single good chair, and a broken chair that is lying smashed. You also see a small stove top that has vents that lead out and upward, um, like into the earth, out somewhere. Uh, and again, like I said, you see also see a small, um, like a buffet that has like plates and things in it. Uh, Is there food? Get into the room and I'll let you know. <laughs> I was about to say, I'm going to go in. I'll let them, I'll let everyone know that hallways not right. trapped. Uh, you're free to go into the room. There are, there are canned items in the larder. Um, Things such as, you're not really sure because none of you speak the language, but you can see that there are canned goods. A few of them have pictures on them. Most of them, though, are white labels with black block printing on them. A few of them have pictures that look like uh, maybe carrots. Uh, another one look, that looks like uh, an apple or maybe a tomato. It's a red, roundish color, like shaped fruit. Uh, and it appears to be not like stocked full, but it is neatly stocked like someone ate some meals here and ha maybe haven't or it's been, you know, said to be restocked soon. Is there dust on these? Uh, there is not. She hmm. would remark about the fact that there's not dust on any of these cans, even though that there were dust on the walls. What are it? Do the cans say what's in them for the mystery on dusty cans? Is there a um, label on them? Pictures. There's, there's a picture on sure. a few of them. Most of them, though, have black block lettering in a language that none of you speak. This one looked like peaches. I'll take those. Um, Start opening up all the cans looking for one can of peaches. <laughs> yeah. If there's no peaches, well, they're going to be really mad about their food. Um, Apparently I did another pun and we all get a boon for it. We we all? We, we all? Party boon. Okay. Party boon! Uh, uh, everybody gets a plus three to their passive perception. What does that raise passive perceptions to? Uh, mine goes up to a 16. That's a 19. Plus three, you said? That's a yeah. 21 for you, isn't it? It is a 21 for me. I have all the elf eyes. Something on this wall looks odd. Can my elf eyes perceive it more? Can I do a perception roll on it? <laughs> You can give me an investigation. What check. do my elf eyes see? Well, um, some of the brick here looks different. Hey, Emrys, this brick looks different. You should probably touch it. <laughs> Looking for science. <laughs> no, um. I will. Uh... <laughs> I will. Nope. No. <laughs> I, uh, will. I will touch it, though. Uh, I mean, Cassandra no. hasn't. You don't touch it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, not with, not with that out in the air now. Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> not in that form. Not in that Thank form. Thank you very much. I'm going to take my character and go home. <laughs> yeah, put him in my front pocket and I'm leaving. Um... I will, uh, I mean, Lysandra hasn't steered me wrong. Yet. Yet. I mean, she does dislike the French, but she, she cares for you, so she's probably not good. She's like, she'll French. heal you if you... <laughs> Emrys, like, I'm all French. Woo! <laughs> Emrys uh, is 100% 
Francais. <laughs> uh, For you, we an exception. We get omelette de fromage. That's about as French as I'm getting on you. Um, Ooh, say it again. <laughs> Qui a coupé la fromage? Is that what you said? Qui a coupé la fromage? Or did you say omelette du fromage? We get uh, omelette du fromage. Uh, Going back to Dexter's I, okay, lab. Okay, so I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you one that's even further. There was a show that used to come on called Freakazoid. It was about a superhero who was crazy. There was a whole episode where he taught the phrase qui a coupé la fromage, which is who cut the cheese in French. So there you go. We're educational as well. Uh, <laughs> My last name may be French. Emerson's last name may be French. Do I know French? No, I I had a I had a character in a game that was was a was a French model, and somebody came up and I clearly put in the bio, player does not speak French. <laughs> they came up and started speaking French to me. And I was You're just like, like staring at them, like, huh? Um, okay. Uh, but no, I'll 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 check out the bricks. I'll, I'll like just kind of like, I won't press it. But I'll just like run my hands over it to start. Sorry, what is investigation check? Okay. Remember, I'm old. I've seen a lot of television. <laughs> Eleven. Seem like oddly different brick. Touched it, nothing happened. Didn't seem to like you touch the brick. So congratulations. Can I? Uh, I'll. Uh... Moonin, touch the brick. Can I stick a dagger under it to see if it'll pop out? I was gonna say I was just gonna take the rifle and poke Start it. With the butt tapping of the rifle. on it. What happens if we knock on a brick and somebody knocks back? Cool. Then what? Well, first we shit ourselves, then we run. <laughs> I didn't expect that comment so quickly. <laughs> it's like you don't even I know. I thought me. we were looking I'm... for somebody. Are we not looking for somebody? We're looking we're for just invest... information. We're looking for anything at this point. I thought we were looking for the like wizard that P Peter Diedrich. If he happens to be here in hiding, that's that's lovely, good find. We could learn some things, but for now, I think we're just trying to figure out if he is here or where he could be. Uh, somebody else, give me an investigation check, and Got it. let's let's. Uh... Oh, Nat twenty! I know the thing. Watching your cohorts push on the wall and like try to lever it and things like that you're looking about where the buffet is and you're kind of like doing something for some reason you reach over and under the lip of the buffet you kind of run your hand over it and you feel a button as you push it there is a slight hiss and the door slides aside I did need to reiterate something. When you asked me about the dust on the cans earlier, they're not they're not like layers of dust. There is dust on them, but it's not like layers of dust. They weren't pristine cans sitting in a dusty They were room. not like they weren't fresh off the shelf li delivered. Okay. Here. They were they as dusty as the walls? Uh slightly less. Why aren't you doing the reveal? Thank you, asshole. Uh, you should be able to move just through this wall there. This hallway seems to extend on for about 15 feet before turning around a corner. Do, you, do we want if, me to go first again? If you want to continue leading the group, I'll cover you from behind. 
you have all the dexterity, so yes. Let you go first. I've I would I've be a creep. Um, alright, then, uh, so be it. Shouldn't take crepe off of anyone. Nope. <laughs> alright. Uh, give me perception checks. 16. 16? <laughs> 8 is 2 plus 6. Uh, perception... Well, That's the good cheap. news is is that your passive oh, is an 18, so your floor is 18. Well, 21, technically, so. I matched my passive. Uh, so if you match your passive, that is the... That's where you're at. Yeah. I... yeah. Hey, hey, we have somebody joining us. Hello. Uh, we missed you. It's a gish. I missed all of your beautiful faces. It is good to hear you. Sorry. And I um, will adjust your thing so yes. you are now here and with us. As you make your way down this hallway, um, there are no traps that seem to lead the way. You find yourself approaching in an open area. No doors block this off at all. All right. It seems to be a large bedroom or a bed chamber. Oh. Wardrobes and chests along with a bed that appears to have uh, not been made recently. Um adorn the hallway. There are uh, a few pictures on the walls depicting scenery and things like that, but nothing of real note. A fireplace with uh, cold embers, well, not cold embers, but cold ash in it, uh, adorn the inner wall. Is there dust on the bed? Lips moving, can't hear you. <laughs> Is there dust on the bed? There is like about the same amount. Like it hasn't been slept in recently, but not like years. The pillows. Is there one impression or two? Does it look like one person's been sleeping here or two? One. I'm going to start doing a usual room sweep. Check under the bed. Check the fireplace. With that in mind. Checking the fireplace? Give me yeah. an investigation check. Ooh. With a whole plus zero. That's an 18. An 18? Mm hmm You start to move around the fireplace, and it has, um, inside of it, it has that wooden, uh, like the wood holder, you know, the metal cage with the two front things and then outside you have all of your normal equipment that you would see like a fire poker you know a stoker and everything that you would think to see in there um you notice that the shovel for scooping the ash out of there seems to be as you start to kind of move things around it seems to be kind of stuck like you can't actually lift it out and you notice that there's actually two of them one of them moves. The other one seems to be stuck, affixed to the thing that's in there. As you start to move it, you pull out on it, and nothing happens, but you then pull up. Mm -hmm. And the whole case that they're sitting in rises up about that far. And as it does, you hear a... <sighs> as the fireplace pivots, allowing you entry into a small hallway. I found a thing. Well, we've got two hallways to continue down. Um, yes. Is there anything else in here before we move on? Checking all the other, the other things. There's a, a, a chest and a wardrobe that is mm -hmm. there. I'd say my next place would be under the bed that I'd be looking. 
you get down and turn your head to look under the bed, and there's nothing under the bed. Nothing under the bed? Nope. No, nothing looking back at you. <laughs> you look under the bed, and you see Gej going, don't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like... Stands up with a pistol drawn. <laughs> I'm sorry. Just opens fire on the bed. <laughs> Ow, fuck. What's wrong? What's wrong? Nothing now. <laughs> In the wardrobe, is there, um, like, what type of clothing is it? Is it like men's clothing or women's clothing? It appears to be men's clothing, and it appears to be period like up to date clothing it's not like old clothing um several sets of trousers uh vests with nice shirts on them and a long like kind of a long coat with big pockets in it uh it is like a dark gray in color uh it is not a thick coat like a weather coat it more it's a thinner material almost like a lab coat it's a nice coat. She really wants to take it, but she's like, "Well, will somebody remind me to take this coat on the way out if we don't find the guy, <laughs> or, or or if we don't die?" Um, as we're exploring this room, I want to delve in a bit further, but I would also like to give us a break. I want to get up and stretch our legs and catch up uh, Voodoo and get get uh, them in the game here. So why don't you guys give us 10 minutes. We're going to take a break, stretch, get water, things like that. Uh, let's call it uh, 20 till. So we'll say, come back at the 40 mark. Does that sound good? Excellent. Everyone out there who is watching us, thank you for the stretch. Guys, stay tuned. We will be back to finish the next half or the last half of the show. Uh, go get water yourselves. Go get something to snack on. And make sure you spread the word that the troubleshooters is still going on. We'll be back in a few minutes. Thanks, guys.
Welcome back, everyone. All right. Let me just <laughs> drag and drop that. No, you were with us this whole time. Why aren't you dragging? <clears throat> oh, hey, look. I'm there. There he is. Oh, there he goes. Okay. Awesome. Um, descending the staircase because they've been gone for a few minutes longer than you want to and at Colm's behest Gej you quickly catch up to the rest of the party investigating what appears to be a bedroom well no one's bleeding it says Papa Bear is it new? Yeah, I actually got it at Father's Day, but I just hadn't unboxed it or anything. So, and apparently I've made a mess. And if anybody wants to know, the sugar-free Italian sweet cream is phenomenal. It's really good. You know, since I got the beatus, <laughs> we have to be careful what we're drinking. All right. <clears throat> the fireplace opened up. You do have the hallway that you uh, were initially looking at as well and you have which way would you like to go well, did we check the wait. chest in here before we leave i know we checked the you have not the other thing with the, sweet <clears throat> the wardrobe lab coat. that's the, the sweet word lab for coat. it the uh the chest itself contains a few minor items um like mostly uh, pairs of nice supple boots. Uh, you see uh, small cloths in there. Uh, your passive perception for now until the end of this encounter is uh, increased by three, which gives you a 19, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct. You notice that the, the depth of the chest from the top of it to the floor versus the top of it to the bottom of the inside there's a bit of a discrepancy. And so you kind of knock and pulling some of the stuff aside, you find a hook and open up the false bottom to it. Mm -hmm. uh, inside, you find several travel documents with different names for each one, but the same picture of a, of a handsome man in a gray outer coat, a nice shirt and a vest. Um, it's black and white, so uh, it's all kind of gray. But you notice that it, the picture is the same, but the names on each one of them is different. One of the names, uh, which is a uh, like a travel document from um, uh, the Austria-Hungary Empire, or the Aust Austro-Hungary Dominion, uh, is for Peter Dietrich. Hmm. Well, that's what we're looking for, isn't it? You also find uh, several stacks of bills, as well as um, gold marks, just, uh, you know, standard gold that can be exchanged for things. Um, knowing that each one of the marks is about um, uh, 10 ounces, that it's worth a pretty penny. There's about 60 marks in all. So you're looking at like 600 ounces of not, that doesn't mean it weighs 600 ounces. When I'm talking about 600 ounces, it's the, uh, the value weight. Yeah. Like, so we just found a lot of money and travel papers. Correct. We should get these papers to our buddy upstairs. On our way out, or on our down? way out. <laughs> you're just looking for that coat, because <laughs> you're like on our way out. I'm gonna grab that coat. So we're on our way out, right? I mean, because <laughs> I want that coat. We could take all of this, wrap it in the coat, bring it to Colm, come back down. <laughs> but we don't know if he is still alive yet. So it seems. 
rather odd to steal from someone who may still be alive. <laughs> he, he walks out of the bathroom. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> what are you doing in my home? <laughs> and why are you taking my things? We also just don't know what we're going to encounter down here. Mm -hmm. We may not get a chance to come back. Sure, there's seems to be almost nothing down here with the layer of dust, but... By the amount of dust down here, if they were around, I feel like they'd come back for this. Exactly. And even if there's nothing down here, there's still traps. We could always set one off by accident, and this whole place comes tumbling down. We won't be coming back for anything if that happens. Unless you guys want to spend a couple days digging, but, uh... Then we won't yeah. need the money or the coat. If anything, we just give it to Colm. But, um... Right now, why don't we just take it and put it in our bags? Bad you don't have an accordion briefcase of holding. Bliss is not going to take anything. She is she's not going to take anything until it is on her way out. Because that is just who she is. Uh that is not who I am. So I will start gathering some of the papers and I'll even gather some of the money and put it in a bag. Okay. And then I will uh I'll put it all in uh my bag. And then uh, there's always the chance that something may not happen. So, or something may happen, something may not happen. Something may not, something may, you never know. Fates aren't always kind. So, gather them up and do we want to split up and look down these hallways? Or do we want to stick together? I always support splitting the party. Never split the party. I support splitting the party so that you can do more. It always worked out for Scooby-Doo and the gang. I'm just saying. Rubble raggy. Fred and Daphne were off knocking boots in some corner of the abandoned mansion occasionally with Velma watching or filming. Scooby or participating. Shag. I'm sorry. Um, Fred anyway. is so gay. He is definitely not knocking boots with Daphne. Shaggy? Maybe. But it's always but, Velma and Daphne when you think about it. You just don't hate an ascot. I'm just saying. <laughs> don't hate what, an ascot. What are we thinking? I feel like this is a conversation for another time. <laughs> Where are we going, folks? Down the hidden path, down the normal path. <laughs> before the party before we you get into a, a heck of a conversation. Split the party and each take a cleric. But yep. only <laughs> one of us is very dexterous. I wink at the invisible camera in the room. That's me. Um, I have a high AC. I'll go. You can shoot after me. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it's us. All right then. So, uh, <clears throat> who's going where? Gesh, do we want to go down or... Oh, never mind. Lissandra's chosen oh, Answer that question. <laughs> answer that question right away. <laughs> what right. do your or... elf eyes see in the secret hallway? Okay. All right. <laughs> secret Gesh. tunnel. Uh, also, get... is there lights down here or are we using flashlights? You're using flashlights. There are lights, but they're not on right now. So, have we Gage just been walking and... by all the light switches? Nobody <laughs> thought to ask until now. So, fair enough. Uh, Gage and Emrys. The hallway continues south before turning a corner. All right. Uh, you see it uh, end at a door in front of you that is currently closed. Before I carry on with that description, let me come back to our intrepid secret tunnel goers. <laughs> the room that you step into is unlike the others. The first thing is that it is brightly lit. 
The floor is shaped in diamonds cut of white and blue stone at the four corners, drawn in some brownish red material or matter, you see symbols on the floor. A stone disc or a stone dais made of two discs sits in the middle of the floor and on top of it lies the body of a man. Two more yeah. passageways lead off from this into clearly secret areas that open up somewhere else. Is the reddish material blood? The reddish material is blood indeed. Um, you are elven. These symbols look familiar. What are the symbols? Give me an arcana check. Both of you, please. <laughs> okay. Nine. Actually, not bad. Sixteen. Okay. You know that they are... You're not sure what they are, but they are related to the Feywild. Your ancestral home. Not necessarily yours, but, you know, where your people came from. Moonin, you've seen this on occasion, just dabbling and getting to know people as you do. You realize that these are anchor points that have to deal with teleporting back and forth. Planar? Slipping beyond the veil. Hmm. I will relay that to Liz. She's going to ask if it's a stepping in the circle, stepping on the red marks, or how it, is it? Magic? It, take, oh. <laughs> it does take, you know from your arcana check, that it does take activating. Just standing on the stone would be okay. Okay, I was going to say, otherwise, magic's not my thing. I've heard of this stuff. I recognize the description of what they look like, but like that's that's where it ends for me. Yeah, if it doesn't deal with the dead, I usually don't, don't mind it. Um, the person on the middle of this dais, is it the same person that is in the photos? Um... <clears throat> Given the state of his face, you're not sure. He is badly mangled. His face is almost completely gone, as though it were either clawed, ripped, or chewed by something. Like a Halloween pumpkin that's been out in since like October till like mid December. <laughs> you know it. Not quite there anymore. Can Ugh. she tell how long he's been dead? Uh, give me a medicine check. That is a 26. Uh, he has been dead only a matter of a few days. By your best guess, anywhere between three to four at most. And he does have all of the signs you would see, so the blood pooling at the points, you know. Does he still have a mouth? Um, it is ripped to pieces and things, but it could still service for the effect that I think you're going to go for. Yes, if I'm you're going gonna to cast to what talk. I think you're going to cast. Yeah, I'm going to try to cast Talk with the Dead as a third level spell. Okay. We go for Speak with Dead. Just one second here. Not what I meant to click. 
Uh, okay, so speak with the dead. You just simply reach out and do so. Uh, you get to ask it, I believe it's three questions or is it five questions? Five questions. Um, before she does that, she's going to tell Moonin that she can speak with the dead and whether he wants to wait until the party is there or if they want to just ask five questions. I don't know where the part how far the party is going to be going the other way. We could see where the other two exits head to. And if it looks like it's far off, we can ask questions. If not, we can wait for the party. You can talk to the dead. Sorry. It's a new thing. Wrapped my brain around that for a second. Just realized what she said. It, it's a new thing, but yes, I can I can speak with the dead, and now I can talk to anybody as well. That's a new new thing for me, which is kind of fun. Talk to anyone. Correct. If they have a spoken language, I can talk to anyone. Can you understand everyone, or just tell them things? No, I can understand them if they're... Let me just... That's really handy. Yeah, I, the spell grants the creature you touch the ability to understand any spoken language it hears. Moreover, when the target speaks, any creature that knows at least one language can hear the target and understand what it says. Cast so, Babelfish? Yeah. You cast Babelfish on him? Correct. I, <laughs> that, that is, technically I cast Tongues, which I hope comes with snakes. <laughs> And a bunch of guys in button snap down shirts with bolo ties and cowboy boots. And they're all from West Virginia for some reason. <laughs> but like that might have been a little too specific. <laughs> that was very <laughs> <laughs> That might have been a little too specific, sorry. Um, but yes, it is a new thing, but yes, I can talk with anyone, including the dead. Um That's kinda I creepy. Can only ask but I want to see this. But I can only ask five questions to dead because they're, they're not that smart. And they only know what they knew in life. So there are stipulations for speaking with the dead. So if they went down that tunnel, they're probably this way. Okay, let me move the button. Oh, that's a good pun. They're not that smart. That's a no-brainer. Her, her. All right, so you're going this way. Um, you easily find yeah. the mechanism that opens this door. However, before I come back to that, I'm going to go back to Emrys and to Gage. Uh, Emrys. Heading down this hallway. Uh huh. You don't find any traps in the hall. Feels new. Well, I mean, it shouldn't, but at the same time, it's still kind of. Uh, hey, there was a the, pancake trap in one of the hallways. That's fair. Uh, the door that you approach <laughs> is, mm -hmm. however, locked. And give me a perception check. Okay. I was about to say, not for me, but then. Uh, Realize. E. So your floor is 16 because that's what your perception is right now, right? Yes, my passive, yeah. You hear something scrabbling and moving in the room. Gesh, can you hear that? As well. What's Gej's passive perception? 19. So add 3, because right now you guys are under a boon of plus 3 to your perception, so 22. Yeah, yeah, you hear it. He's just going to 
Okay, so um, I'm not crazy. It's not just me. Um, no, no, no. We didn't say you weren't crazy. You just said you're... <laughs> okay. Player, yes. Emrys, uh, we'll, we'll figure it out later. Um, <clears throat> the door's locked, and there's something behind it kind of scrabbling around. Uh, can you pick the lock? I can. Probably. Hopefully, me staring at my dice like, uh, I yeah I can. Do we want to try it? Liss, you hear scrabbling sounds past this door, and as you go to, you realize that this door isn't shut properly. There's just a little bit of it, like it's been opened and not shut behind you properly. Uh, Otter, get your or Moonen, get your get your gun. Uh, pretty sure whatever was eating the Moonen, get your gun. There. <laughs> I will walk up behind you and draw a pistol. Normally, an unnerving sentence to hear. <laughs> you just gonna put it right by your ear when you fire it? <laughs> no. Okay. You're unlocking the door. Go ahead and give me your thieves' tools check, please. Are you just pushing the door open, Liz? Uh, as soon as um, Moonin is behind me, she's going to like kick open the door. Okay. And ready in action of probably a cantrip. All right. How did you do on your thieves' tools? Eighteen. That is enough Ooh. to undo the door. What is your plan? Are you just going to kick open the door? Are you pushing open the door? Are you going to surprise whatever's there? Uh, are you gonna I mean, if Yez is ready behind me, I'll just, like, I won't kick open the door, but I'll push it open very quickly. Okay. Thank you, JT. Gej has received a luck point. Thanks. Ooh, luck points are going out. Appreciate Which is it. probably for the best, because as you both open the door, unbeknownst to you, at a simultaneous point, Oof. Light floods what was once a jailer's room. A single desk with keys spread out upon it. The chair sitting there and overturned. You also see two gates that are currently look as though whatever was behind them have ripped open. In the midst of the room sits a creature that, if you'll look at the chat there in roll 20, I have displayed it for you. Or it will be displayed for you shortly. Oh, what a nasty man. Good for him. He looks like that. He has, where his arms would end are ends in gigantic spikes. He has, or a gigantic spike. He has two more spikes off of above them. It howls at you wordlessly and immediately scrambles towards you all prepared to attack. Roll for initiative. That's disgusting and I don't like it. It doesn't care and how dare you body shame him. <laughs> Does it look stitched oh, together so like Adrian did? It does have a sort of a piecemeal look to it. Mm -hmm. All right, that is a 15 for list. And okay. she does have she did have that cantrip on the ready as soon as she opened the door, so I don't know if that counts as a surprise or not. All right, you got a 15. That's a um, 14. Well, hello. And we still haven't had a long rest, correct? No. Not since the lycanthropes. Okay, everybody, um, we body shamed that poor creature, therefore we now have a party bane. I didn't! I said I liked him! Followed sorry, by, ha ha, party <laughs> boon. Ha <laughs> ha, uh, party boon. So, so we have party a bane. party bane and a boon. All right. Your party bane will work such as this. For the first two rounds of combat, 
it works like the Bane spell. Roll a d4, subtract that from your rolls. Okay. First two rounds? For the first two rounds. Okay. Okay. For the party boon, for the following two rounds, works like bless. All right. Uh, what did you have for your initiative roll, uh, Emrys? I don't know how bless works. 22. Bless is 22. Uh... Roll a d4. It's the oh. same as Bane. Roll a d4 and add it to your roll. So roll two d4s, basically. No, no, no. Just the first two rounds, roll a d4, subtract it from your roll. Okay. The next two rounds, roll a d4, add it to your roll. Oh, so it's like round one, round two, Bane, round three. Three round four round bless. Four bless exactly. Okay. And okay, sorry. Sage, what was your initiative? Eight. Wait, hold on. I forgot. Four. Wait, are we doing the D fours for the the initiative as well? No. Okay. Just, just an eight then. Yeah. Okay. Plus eight to initiative is just a lot. Mm. Yes. <laughs> okay. Up first. Emrys. Uh all right. I guess revolver out. And uh Oh wait, uh real quick before you do that. Liz, your cantrip. You're gonna have your cantrip go off. It was pull the dead, so a wisdom save of sixteen. Uh, he does not succeed. That is a total of eight points of damage. Okay. But it is necrotic, if that matters. Doesn't seem to have any different effect on him. So, there we go. All right, now, Emrys, sorry, go ahead. Yep. Uh, okay, so it's 11 minus 1, 10 plus 5, 15. 15 hits. And because it hasn't gone yet, I do get my sneak, right? That is correct. Yay. Assassino. So that's... Liz, so you're talking, but I can't hear you. 17. Sorry. Um, we've gone up to fifth level, so it's now two d eight. So it's a it's eleven points of damage, not. Okay. Thank you. I uh, will subtract the other three. Twenty three points of damage. Twenty three points of damage. All right. Yes. Uh, d four to damage as well, or just to. Just to attack. Okay. Perfect. And then uh, I will. It's actually. Uh, Technically, it's attack rolls, saving throws, ability checks. Okay. What you would roll the d20 on. Okay. Okay, what you would roll a d20 on. Perfect. All right. And then I'm going to uh, take a quick uh, little step back uh, behind my go buddy, uh, Gesh, uh, because... Uh, go get him, pal. <laughs> because baby AC. <laughs> That's all. I got you, pal. <laughs> You've got this. <laughs> I, yeah. Me like everyone else can take a hit. I I can't really. Uh, I am going to die. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, after your turn, then it goes back to Liss. Uh, I'm going to do Toll the Dead again. Uh, give me just one second here. You did that much. And you did that much. Perfect. Got it. Okay, you need another wisdom saving throw from me. Uh, failed again. All right, and because it's lost... Um, Hit points. Damage. 2d12. That's only a six, but it's still six points of damage. Mm -hmm. All right.
right. <clears throat> Moonin. If I angle myself, like, back in here, can I gain line of sight on the creature? Or am I going to have to get into that You're room? You're going to have to get into that room. You're going to be cutting that wall pretty good. I will admit, too, that you guys are using flashlights, right, to shine on this? Yes. So keep in mind that, um, keep in mind that for purposes of, like, attacking or firing, things like that. Sure. I'm level five now. I can attack twice. Yep, you can lever action fire. Oh, it's a single action revolver. So... Yep. Well, I'm going to take two steps in. Okay. I'm going to shoot it twice and take two steps back. <laughs> Sounds good. For very same reasons as my friend I don't know about doing the same thing on the other side. So make sure you roll that d4. I'm not going to make you roll in, uh, with disadvantage because you're shining the light on it. Yep. Making the target there. So, But keep in mind that this room looks like a video game room. It's dark. You see this thing skittering in the dark. All of its limbs like pointing at you. With a beam of light shined right on it. So, Cool. Okay. Um, I don't know what this thing is, but I'm not going to take any weird shenanigans on these first couple shots. I'm just going to shoot at it. <laughs> Especially with that D4 like taunting you. Yeah. After, in a wee bit, we'll, we'll add some other things. We'll try that again in a moment. Yeah. But... Math. A 23? 23 does hit. And a 21. Both of those hit. Wow, that's with the D4 off of it? I rolled two 17s. <laughs> Good job. I'm not yeah. mad about it. Um, have played with the revolver in a minute. Those are D8s. Yes. That die ran from me, so we're just going to do a different one. <laughs> You'll need another one. So the first one is 11 damage. Okay. The next one is also 11 damage. Okay. Uh... And And I'm going to take two steps back. I need everybody that is here to give me a constitution saving throw, please. You got it. And this is with the negative D4, right? That is correct. It's going to be a 15 for me. That's a dirty 15. 20. Dirty Sorry. 20. 18. 18. 17. 17. While it was really loud, none of you are deafened by the cacophony of <laughs> in this small space. Sorry. Or actually, I guess it's more like pop, pop in this small space. <laughs> not going to pull out the rifle down here. It's just unpractical. It's still very loud in a very enclosed space, so. Um. All right. I'm gonna get you a revolver with like a compensator on it, so it has a better balance to it. It's got this weird looking thing on the end. Okay. Um. Uh, really quick, Cap. Mm -hmm. We know what we did. Party Bane. We have another Party Bane. Going into this combat. The unnerving shape and movement of this creature, the skittering arms, 
the stitch together form unnerve you so that for the fifth and sixth round, I'm not going to do it on this round because you already have something going on here, you have disadvantage on your attacks. Look, guys, I'm sorry I made fun of Five Arms McGee. <laughs> You're just making it worse now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> How many Banes can we stack on top? I bet all he's right. a fantastic chef. He's got so many arms. And they're all like knives, so he's probably like really good at just chopping stuff, right? This one, Julian's. Yeah. This one up here, like uh, Mince's. This one over here does something. No cursing. Why would you do that to us? Uh, we no have means. a no cursing. Here is your timer. This is because Gedge keeps making it worse. Yeah. No cursing doesn't stop the, the comments of Five Arms McGee. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, but I also know that, you know, she she curses a lot, and I curse a lot, but, you know. I swear like a sailor, I'm sorry. Me. <laughs> I think this entire party, with the exception of like, like actually, honestly, Q and Otter are like <laughs> the rest of us. We're the ones that are going to mess it up for everybody. Uh, okay, uh, at the that is your turn. This creature's turn now. Uh, he moves with a lightning fast speed across the room. Ah. Uh, uh. As he goes. Hello. Oh, hi. It's all up in my face. <laughs> like, see him coming up, I guess, and I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> just skitter, skitter, skitter. <laughs> ah. The arms reach out, and at first you're like preparing yourself to be pierced by them. Instead, they reach around you. What is your armor class? 18. Is he giving me a hug? It does look like that, and then he just slides past you. You dodge out of the way as the arms try to literally embrace you. It's called an embrace attack. I'm really nervous. I don't know why. I don't know why. I was like, should I give you a moment? A 23 to hit you. Holy. Uh, oh, this you are, you're going to take 15 piercing damage as he misses with the embrace. And then slams into you with one of the arm spikes. It's not a good time. Not not loving it. Do 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 do. Nope. <laughs> no 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 nope. <laughs> I'm hating it. Uh, okay, that is his turn. Okay. Oh. That hurt. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm back. Okay. Um I've missed you guys. <laughs> so much. <clears throat> I'm gonna reach around for my friendo over there and in the um, words of Idris Elba, reset the clock. Yeah. Sorry guys. <laughs> I'm a bad person. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna reach around behind me, at, or I'm gonna look behind me just enough so I can see Emrys. I'm gonna cast Shield of Faith. Uh, buddy, you have a plus two to your AC for as long as I can keep up that concentration. Oh, um, thank you. Uh huh. And I'm, I'm, since it's right in my face, I'm gonna try to hit it uh, twice with my spear by using War Priest. <clears throat> oh. You were it. Negative Ghost Rider. That one's not going to do anything. Just remember, you got your luck there, Gage. What does luck do? It is what allows you to re-roll re a die or force someone else to re-roll a die. I think I'm going to go ahead and use it before I forget about it. Yep. <laughs> Just a friendly that reminder. One... Thank you. That one's infinitely better. Uh... Don't forget to subtract your D4, unfortunately. I got it. 16 minus 3 plus 4. So 17. That will hit him. Cool beans. <clears throat> Fuck. 
That is four damage with my spear. Okay. And for the other one, since... Uh, six, ten, ten. Sixteen? No, no, ten. Ten. Wait, ten to hit? Yeah. Oh, no. Ten misses. And that is my turn. Okay. Uh, one of the things you notice when you stab into him, uh, given the dim light around, it doesn't seem to have as much effect as you would hope. Oh. Round number two. You have one round left of your bane. First up, Emrys. Uh, Gesh uh, just stuck a little bit, and uh, uh, I will... <laughs> Relevel the revolver at it. <laughs> Just push, push Either push. that or I'm like sneaking my arm underneath the Gash's arm. I'm not a tall man, it's fine. Um <laughs> that motion was not comfortable. <laughs> I have a fake orange gun I can use just to get a picture. Um doesn't make that motion any better. Um <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna feel a hand on your shoulder. Just relax. <laughs> just relax. It's just, it's just me, guys. Don't worry about it. Um, it's just the gun. It's just the barrel of the gun. I promise. Don't shoot my ear again. <laughs> me covering Gage's ear. <laughs> it's okay. I got you. Uh, okay. Fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, eighteen to hit. Eighteen hits. Okay. Um. And because the Gesh is in... in the game isn't the combat, it's watching you guys do the math. <laughs> That's where the real tension Yeah, comes I'm from. sitting here and I'm like, I love Dungeons and Dragons. I am bad at math. Boy, am I bad at math. Um, Gesh is five feet, so sneak attack? Mm hmm. I like rolling dice. So cool. It's a dexterity based weapon, so yep. Twenty-one damage. That's the lovely damage you've done there. Looks like it hurts a lot. Not really. I sure hope so. Uh, it doesn't seem to. Alright, uh, that is your turn. Uh, that is. I, okay. I will also still stay right here. Liss. Um, Liss is going to do the same thing that she did last turn, so it gives me a wisdom saving throw. Uh, you will have to move into the room as he is out of line of sight right now. Because he went into the hallway. <laughs> I mean, not what I was thinking, but yeah, that'll work too. <laughs> it's like around the corner at him. Hey, hey. <laughs> Dong. All right. Um, <laughs> wisdom saving throw. Ah, 17. All right, nothing happens. Okay. Um, Moonin. That's me. We're Unless gonna... there's a bonus action you'd like to take. Liss? No, uh, there's no other bonus action. All right. Moonin, your turn. I'm just going to wing in around the corner here. Gain sight. I'll just come straight down. 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah, we'll do that. And we're just going to do two shots. We're going to try one dazing shot. Okay. And one regular shot. With the D4. Oh, 
Okay, that's a one. That, that makes life easier. Not throwing away the match. So, 22 for the that dazing hit? shot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that hits. Um, I need a con save, DC 16. Uh, 18. Okay, he's fine. He takes eight, 13 damage. Okay. And then the second shot was 11 minus 3 plus 10. 18? 18 hits. Cool. Ooh. 12, 17 damage. Okay. And that is my go. Hey, buddy. <coughs> Embracing you again. Just making up for all the hugs I didn't get from my father as a child. It's fine. 23? <laughs> yeah, that'll Ooh. do it. Okay. Reaches around and slams the hooks into your back, grappling you. You are grappled until the grapple ends. You are frightened. You realize that the terror of this thing isn't so much you like you have never known terror this way before to the point where it racks your brain. You are going to take 24 piercing damage mm. and and 18 psychic damage. Yeah, that's a wrap, man. <laughs> That it puts you at zero? Uh, the first set of... Is it, like, all together? Mm-hmm. Like, I take it all at once? Yes. Okay. Um, so the first 24 puts me at, you know, zero. But if I'm taking it all at once, is there a rule for, like, mass damage in this? Yes. It has to equal whatever HP you had left. And then enough damage to hit your maximum HP on the other side. So you haven't gotten... It's not massive damage enough to kill you. 24 plus 18, that's 32. I had 21 HP left. Okay, so you're fine. It wouldn't have hit. Like okay. I said, it wouldn't have hit the max. You would have had to have done... Let's see, what's your maximum HP? 41. So you had 21 left? Yeah. I would have had to have done 62 points of damage. Okay. Because it um, has to take away the 21... And then do the 41 on top of that to hit your maximum damage. Okay. I'm That's at... why at lower levels, it's just... But you are at zero right now. I'm at one. Ooh, uh, half orc! <laughs> yeah. Not today! Not today! <laughs> I'm going to take one more squeeze from this guy, and I'm down for the count. Guys. With that being said, shit. Our timer is up. We can say it. Oh, Fuck, I hate shit. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, there is only one thing. Actually, that is the end of its turn. That is all it's going to do. Cool beans. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That is. Uh, that brings us to your turn. So while whilst I am grappled, am I? I'm not pinned, am I? No, the grapple effect just makes your dexterity zero. You can't take the benefit of anything that uh, of that would grant you a benefit from your dexterity. So I can cast sorry, guiding... Your, sorry, your base movement is zero, and you can't take advantage of anything that would give you a benefit from your dexterity. Um, casting guiding bolt would still be considered a ranged attack in melee, so you would still have disadvantage on it. Or I can try to break this grapple because I'm frightened and get away. You can break the grapple. Keep in mind that the frightened condition. 
Um, you have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls. And Bane. And you have the Bane on there. It's not looking too hot right now, guys. This is where the sinister part of this creature comes into play. Keeping him at okay. bay. It's really good at hugs. It's really good at hugging. You know, he just doesn't know how to receive the affection at the moment. It's 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 scaring him. This dark place. Um, no, uh, I'm going to instead of that cast Word of Radiance because it's just a something with that I can see. Uh, I need a con save of fifteen or greater from okay. this creature. All right, give me just one second here. Corn save. Uh, that is a 19. Okay, then nothing happens. There's just a bright flash of light as he cusses at it in Gaelic and uh, tries to squirm <laughs> away, and nothing happens. Aaron, go blow yourself. Uh, all right. And that brings us to the top of the third round. You now have Bless. So you roll a d4 and add it to your roll. So congratulations. Uh, and Emrys, you were up first. Your buddy is there. Remember, you can use your action to like release your ally. You can use your action to pull your buddy out of the grab, the gripple. Or you can just shoot the thing. I mean, hell. <laughs> you muted. We can't hear you. My brain was already on shooting it. I apologize. Um, I'm going to shoot it. I'm really glad I shot it. It's an at 20. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be a 25, 26, 27 with a D4. Okay. I mean, an at 20 is an at 20. An at 20 is an at 20. Um, dice. Bring the out dice. the dice. Because you're going to double your damage dice and your sneak attack dice. What is that? 3D6, so 66 damage for the, for the sneak attack? 6 and 4D8. A shot in the dark. Start with a 4d8. I the math. This is when an abacus would be really handy. <laughs> 35. 35 points of damage. Jumping Jehoshaphat. All right. Um, you Hello. draw up and fire and as you do it slams into the creature you watch as his head is rocked back and you also see the arms tighten as he does his reaction of tightening embrace <sighs> and I'm so sorry 17 points of psychic damage to your buddy who is grappled. So, Gage, I'm down. You are at zero. The limp form of Gage is held in the creature's arms. Oh. Um. <laughs> Unforeseen circumstances. <laughs> consequences. <laughs> well, I guess his attention will be on me now. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he's got a snack in his arms. <laughs> I mean, you keep snacking on my friend. I'll just keep up the shots. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm so sorry, Gish. Liz. It's okay. I still love you. Aww. I still have that. You know what? That's fine. I'll take that. All right. Um, I just heart this entire so group. <laughs> is, 
Spare the Dying better, or is Revivify better? Um, Revivify will raise them if they are dead. Within a minute. Spare, within a minute. Spare the Dying will just keep them from having to make death saving throws. It stabilizes them. Um, before you do that, we have received a party boon to go into our list of boons and banes. <laughs> okay. So you're on the boons right now where you have a... Um, we have two rounds of bless. You have two rounds of bless, which you're in the first round right now of bless. Then you have disadvantage. For two rounds? For two rounds. Yes. Yep. We're going to make this, bane, this boon go into effect right this second. Okay. A... A voice from down the hallway says, I heard gunshots, and I thought that I would come and see what's going on. <laughs> cool. Oh, good lord, what is that? And he takes a, an object out of his accordion thing, shakes it, and throws it down the hallway. It doesn't explode. What it does is it goes right over your head and into the room, and all of a sudden, poof! And the whole area is lit up with light. Okay. So we don't have to write anything down. It's just we can see now. You can see now. Perfect. Call me an angel. Like much of a boon, but it. It's you'll good. see. Uh, and then he goes, Is schedule right? <laughs> uh, maybe. That's a no. My cut goes. I'll be around the corner. <laughs> he, he just he just kind of looking around the corner. <laughs> can I can I touch touch the gez around the creature? Reach no. between its legs. Are you trying to do like uh cure wounds? No, I'm trying to do spare the dying. Oh no, you I can't reach to... around and touch him. You'd you'd have to get into the creature's space and you cannot. Cleric, you are. Give it that you don't have to touch him. Am I I'm imagining that? Thing? Bards, I'm just all like, can I have to wait him to get into his face? Can't grave clerics do that from a distance? Yeah. What type of cleric are you again? Grave cleric. I'm a grave cleric. I don't I think, think so. I'm. I want to double look because I, for some reason, I feel like I remember that. I'm sorry. I hate to like. No, it's okay. Let's let's go. I'm already there. Uh, in addition, you learn the spare the dying cantrip, which doesn't count against a number of clerics. For you, it has a range of thirty feet, and you can cast it as a bonus action. So it's not even your action; Ooh. it's a bonus action. Oh hell yeah! Let's do that. <laughs> Sorry, that was gonna bother. Me. Say anything. <laughs> you that, said it, and, and then... my brain went, "Yeah, I think so." And then I'm going to need a wisdom saving throw, and I'm going to try to hold person this thing. Because it is a humanoid, correct? It is a monstrosity. Ah, damn. Okay. Um, and I guess just give me another... Well, hold on a second. Now I don't know what to do, because I got a bonus, bonus action, so hold on a second. So the good news is, is that Gez, you do not have to make uh, death saves. Yet. Again. Yet. Again. Yeah, that's the tricky thing about the whole person spell, is it literally has to be humanoid. That's why, like, when you get up to the higher levels, hold monster, because then it just doesn't matter. Whatever it is. <laughs> I'm going to hold that thing right there. <laughs> um, I've learned my lesson, guys. Don't offend things. <laughs> don't be yeah, a shit like right now, right? <laughs> Don't sell black tango me, sir. <laughs> I'm sorry, Liz, what'd you say? <laughs> we have a bless right now, correct? That is we correct. Do. You have a D4. Uh I'm pretty sure I hit the thing with um, inflict wound with a 22. That does hit. 
and it's at third level because I'm really out of spell slots. So it's five d ten. So give me just a second. <laughs> okay. Uh, you inflict wounds as a touch, so you'd have to move up behind it. Got it. Which is no big deal. I mean, you can do that. It's easy enough. Tickle its armpit really quick. Maybe it'll look gush. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, get up yeah. in there. Yes. <laughs> Go. Just sit there and be like, tickle, tickle. <laughs> and tickle, 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 tickle. Kitty. Oh boy, look at his little bandana. Me looking. It's sports. I'm just like, it's, it's, it's an sports ball. ball. <gasps> I can finally see the cat now. Tickled so hard, wounds were inflicted. He he's begging for second dinner. <laughs> I fed you that's already. Like twenty five plus eight is twenty five plus eight is thirty three. That's thirty three points of necrotic damage. Ooh, that Good is. Stuff. It does not like that. <laughs> However, it is still grappling with someone and but it can't take another reaction because it already took one. <laughs> so, your friend is safe for now. Uh, Alright. It is, uh, it's looking I mean, it already looked kind of messed up, but now you can start to see some of the magical stitching is starting to unbind. You can see that it looks like it's holding its form together but barely. Uh, is that your it turn? It looks awful, but more so. More awful than before. <laughs> Awfuler. Yeah. <laughs> Awfuler. Yes, All right. I saved the gauge and I did lots of damage. I'm good. <laughs> okay. That brings us to Moonin. Hey. We're going to burn a grit for advantage for the first shot. Really see if I can't do some damage and we'll do a sharpshooter because I have the bless to make up the difference. Yeah, yeah, I do. That's a 20 plus 10 minus 5. It's 25 to hit. That hits him. Thank as, in a nat tw as in a nat 20? No, that's a 16 plus oh. 4 on the D4. Okay, <laughs> it was like... That would have been a very different sentence had it been the nat 20. Um, that would have reset the that would have reset the timer kind of sentence <laughs> if yeah. we were in the in the no cursing. So that's gonna be twelve seventeen twenty seven damage for the first one. You take aim and fire, you hit this creature right at the base of its spine, or like right at the base of its neck or its skull. You're not even sure if the physiology works or the anatomy is the same. Whatever you do, though, you watch as all five or all four of the outer appendages and the fifth one that's lower curl backwards. It seems to scrabble at wherever it was that you shot. It makes a burbling noise before falling to the ground and collapsing under its own weight. It deflates a little bit like watching something like like something that was full of air just kind of like squeezed out of it. And it turns and forms into sort of a, not dried husk, but it sort of uh, becomes more emaciated as it lays there curling around. From down uh, the end of the hall, you go, does anyone know what that was? Spooky as shit. A meaner, a meaner Adrian? I know what it is. Ugly. Dead. Dead. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if it Thank dropped Gesh, I would have attempted to catch him a little bit, so he just doesn't. No, no, I mean, yeah, yeah, you okay. can. You Is Gesh still down? Like stabilized? Yeah, he's still hero. He's stable. Or, yeah, spare the dying just stabilized him at least. Um, uh, yeah, I would have, I would have caught him. <laughs> I'm uh, so sorry. Colm walks up and takes out what looks like a drinking horn. And he opens the top of it 
then tips Gedge's head back and pours some red-looking liquid into this mouth. It's just booze. It's like, do I want to question your timing of red wine, Colm? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, if anything, it's probably some floral tea. Is Liz probably is coming at the same time Colm is to do cure wounds because she still has twelve hit points. Blood. You get twelve hit points back from the drought that Colm pours into your mouth. Okay, and you get six points from uh, Liz. Okay, so okay. Now hey, you're I'm, gonna, not dead. I'm gonna say this just. For fun, but Q, Q, you know this drinking horn, and that's all I'm gonna say. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, and then it goes back into the accordion, <laughs> into the accordion case. Uh, looking around, this appears to have been, uh, like I said, a jailer's room. A pipe in the wall that looks about big enough for someone to walk through ends in a dark spot, which it looks like it's just shadow, but you realize that it's been painted black. That is the hall that, the little tunnel that you came out of for the secret room that's in the center of this area. Oh. Yes, you Lis. Uh The jail, the cell that was within this room, the gates broken, uh, allowing the creature to escape. It looks like it broke the gates them himself. So, guys, um, now that we're all together, we found a body back there, and Liz wanted to try something to see if we could find some information out. Do we want to do that? I have that? five questions. Do we want to do that before we look any further, or do we want to look further first? Do you want to take the body and get the fuck out of here? <laughs> Should we really? Uh, uh, should we explore more just to make sure there's not more of these things down here? Not that if we close the fountain, they'd be able to get out, but I mean, sure they'd find a way out. Also, I'm pretty sure I'm taking that fucking coat. <laughs> Which reminds me, Colm, I have papers and uh, stuff for you in my, in my bag. I'll give them to you later. Alright, are you going to ask the questions to like right now or are you going to take the body and go? What are you guys going to do? Explore do we further? Wanna... We still don't really have a whole lot of question answers for our time in here. Uh, I guess we're going to go and the other like hallway that's inside the room is that door closed? It is. Okay. Um, and you're there are no referring. Other room that we see. All right. There's no other door. Referring to this, see. right? The one in the blood room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are no other doors out of this area that you have discovered so far. I'm going to stick my head in the cell and see if there's anything in there while they're talking. Investigation check. Um, my whole thing is... Awful at these. I believe I can. My whole thing is getting Gage back up to his feet. That is a whole ten. You see some scratch marks in the wall, but nothing else. Just for giggles, do I still have Bless? <laughs> yeah, you can give yourself that. Party bane's going on. We'll before. say we're gonna add your two blesses, your two boons together. Go ahead and uh, go ahead and actually the boon was to throw that in there. So uh, go ahead and yeah, give yourself bless on that one. Brings us up to an eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Notice some scratches on the wall. <laughs> yeah. I guess I'm going to go look at them scratches. Okay. Uh, passive perception has the, the boon for that's worn off. But you're still looking at a 16, right? Yeah. These are scratches, but they're oddly in like 
form like they form like patterns. Like days? Like letters or characters. Words. Like runes? Hey Colm. Um yes. Can you come here for a second? Certainly. And he pops into the ooh. This doesn't look pleasant. What can I do for you? Now I'm going to point him at the wall and go, does that mean anything to you? <laughs> mm -hmm. <Yes. laughs> Just put his left hand and turn him. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, if you could put me down, I could read them better. Uh, <laughs> oh, he looks did you at say the... get closer to the wall? <laughs> 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 uh, he says they're, they're words. They're written in, and you hear him call for lists. Yeah. Do you I speak Sylvan it. by chance? No, I speak Elven. Sorry. Uh, my Sylvan's rusty, unfortunately. I recognize the characters as being something from Sylvan, but I'm not sure what they are. Wait a minute, I didn't think that Sylvan was a language in this in this time period. What's that? I didn't think that Sylvan was a language in this time period. It would be like a derivative form or a, an earlier version of Elven. Like, say, Latin would be uh, an earlier form for, like, Romance languages. Oh, then she probably would have taken Sylvan over Arabic. So she probably would have known Sylvan. I didn't realize that was a language. So, okay. yeah, she would have known it. Okay. Um... Looking at this, you can see that it is definitely Sylvan, um, and it's just several words repeated. Uh, pain, um, loss, pain, loss, pain, loss, and then it's just the word lost written like three times. Um, pain and loss and pain and loss and then loss. It looks like it was scratched in by a single fine point, like the arm of that creature. It's probably from the thing that we just killed, so we probably put it out of its misery. Um, I kind of want to go and talk to the very dead person in the next room and be like, what the fuck? But, you know, we'll wait until we're done investigating this shit. And investigate you will, but that will wait until next week. <laughs> next week we'll finish discovering the Undercroft, as well as questions that we can ask of dead men. Do they tell tales? We'll find out. Tune in next Monday from 6 p.m. until 9 p.m.-ish as we run through the troubleshooters one more time. Again, real quick shout to the things that we have going on. Uh, coming up in February... Not only do we have the virtual D&D &D weekend where you can play D&D &D with me on uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or Saturday and Sunday. Um, and then on uh, the last weekend in February is the Winter Fantasy. I will be running games on Thursday night and then on Saturday. I know for the D&D for the &D weekend, it's the weekend prior to that. And we will be running games on Saturday and Sunday. So plenty of D&D &D to get to play with me. So look for it uh, for the yawningportal.com for the tickets and Winter Fantasy. Uh, I will be posting links on our on our Facebook page. So make sure you follow us on Facebook. Uh, follow us in the Discord because I will probably post them there as well. Uh, let's see. And then in April, we have live games going on. If you want to be a part of those, we're actually talking about doing a tournament here at the convention. A D&D tournament where we have a bunch of us running and you get a pre-gen character, and then the adventure is set, and it's basically first to the finish line, first to accomplish the goals and things like that. So it's it should be really entertaining and, and pretty fun. That's um, really entertaining. Yeah. Uh, uh, my friend Carrie is putting that up, and, and it's uh, it, it, it seems like it'll be a really good time. Uh, a huge thanks to Q and to Otter as well as to Vixen and Voodoo. We were really glad that you were able to make it in. I thought you were going to be much later than what you were, so we were really happy to, to have you joining us. Um, it is good to be back. Next week is episode 9, and then we have 10, 11, and 12. That's it. We've got four episodes left for this season. 
And we, that means we've got to wrap up a pretty big arc before we jump into second season. But I know these guys. We can get it done. In the meantime, take care of yourselves. Don't forget, we have Scion tomorrow from 6 to 9. Wednesday, we have Monster of the Week and Descent into Avernus. And then on Saturday, Stolen Cities. So join us for all of those and uh, more on our Discord. Take care, everyone. Until next week. Bye. Good night. Bye.